What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over the Age of Apocalypse storyline. Remember that thanks to Legion Quest, Charles Xavier died, but with his death, the whole universe has changed in the Marvel's universe. So basically, right now, we have a universe where Apocalypse has taken over North America. But in this video, we're going to focus on Scott Summers and Alex Summers because this is a very interesting storyline that I actually like. So I do hope you like today's comic book video. If you do, please hit that like button down below and subscribe. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So with this story, we actually start back five years ago in the past. With this book, it actually tells us that five years ago, Apocalypse had taken over North America. But the book does mention that if Charles Xavier was alive, then maybe the mutant race would be different. Maybe even North America itself would be different as well. At the same time, this book tells us this. We see a spaceship arriving on Earth, which of course ends up with him being chased down by a couple of jets owned by Apocalypse, which of course the jet crash. When they look inside, they find something special in there. Before we jump into the present day, we actually pick up with Scott Summers and Alex Summers. Of course, we know them as Cyclops and Havoc, and they are brothers. Now, this is our first time seeing them in the Age of Apocalypse storyline, but we see here that they belong to Apocalypse forces and they were adopted by Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister is actually the right hand man to Apocalypse himself. We also get our first look at Beast five years ago, who looked like his normal self before the transformation, but he is an evil scientist who works for Mr. Sinister. We then see that Mr. Sinister is called away for something, which we know it had to do with whatever was in that spaceship. Now coming to the present day, we see that the person that was in the spaceship was Christopher Summer, who is better known as Corsair. Usually he is the leader of the Star Jammers, except here in this universe, he was captured when he came back to Earth and has been tested on by Dark Beast and Sinister throughout those five years, except here he does break out of his binds and is able to get away from Dark Beast. Now when Christopher Summers escapes, he runs into Manhattan, where he is shocked to see what happened to the city he once used to live in. Now when he gets in the city and tries to ask what happened to a random person, that person actually attacks him and he was barely able to dodge. That is when he runs into Robbie Robertson, who used to work for the Daily Bugle when it was around. That is when he explains to Christopher Summers everything that had happened and how Apocalypse was able to win. The next section we see that Mr. Sinister is getting ready to send an army of mutants to go find Christopher Summers. Remember that he was captured by Sinister and was being tested on by him. So he is sending Northstar, Aurora, the Bedlam Brothers, implants in the monets now scott summers is confused on why he is not being sent out there to help the others in this new universe cyclops is the son of mr sinister through adoption but also he is supposed to be the leader of this group and you have sinister tell him that sometimes you need to delegate tasks to other people this is letting us know that scott and alex had no idea about their dad being here all this time. Now, it doesn't take long for this team of mutants to go to the last location Christopher Summer was at, which of course was Robbie Robertson's hideout, except when they get there, he is badly injured to the point that he should be dead. Of course, he is not dead, but the mutant group kills him off anyways. Now, the question is, was Christopher Summer the one who badly injured him? 
Now, minutes later, they were able to find Christopher Summer in the streets, which of course begins a full-on battle between the two sides. You would think with the army of mutants that is standing in front of him, that he does not stand a chance here, except he is able to take them all down. Determination to see his boys was kept him going in this fight. With this team being taken down by Christopher Summers, it leads into Scott Summers going to get his brother because the distress single that the team of mutants went off. So that made Scott Summers grab his brother and go to their location. When they get there, well, the entire team has been defeated and Christopher Summer is no longer there. So you have the two brothers continue their search, which leads into a graveyard site. Now, when they get there, Alex Summers shows us that he hates listening to his brother's instructions and begins to walk in without checking his corners leads into Alex Summers almost getting shot by his father. Now this fight doesn't last long because when you think that Scott Summers and Alex Summers are going to fight against their father, you have Christopher Summers tell us that he got information that these two are his sons. Except in the world of Apocalypse, these mutants will kill their own father for just being human but he is hoping the fatherly and son bond will stop them. So you have Christopher Summers reveal to them that he is their father, which of course, at first, they think he is lying to them, but then Scott senses something about him to make him believe that he could be telling the truth. You have Christopher Summers explain why he wasn't around for Scott and Alex all of these years that basically the story is similar to the original marvel universe that one day when the summer family was on their plane enjoying a nice ride that is when they were attacked by the she air empire before christopher and his wife was kidnapped they pushed scott and alex out of the plane to save their lives now once they were abducted of course christopher's wife dies but he then met the members of the star jammers they broke out and continued to fight against the she air empire until he decided to come back to earth looking for his son five years ago. Before they are able to discuss even more about Christopher Summer's story, that is when they are attacked by some other mutants, where we get to see all three of them working together to fight against these mutants. Now, while this fight is going on, you can see that Alex Summers is slowly starting to believe Christopher's story even more now. Scott Summer is still hesitant to believe this man, but at the same time, Christopher knows how to fight. He knows how to instruct the boys on how to fight against these mutants. At the end of the fight, Scott Summers tells the others that they have to move because the weather is about to get very dangerous very soon. We do get a page where we see that Dark Beast and Sinister are looking at the idea of Jean Grey and Scott Summers can make the most powerful mutant because of their DNA. Except that is when Dark Beast mentions that Sinister better hope the Summer Brothers don't figure out that Sinister hid their father all of these years without telling them, which of course could turn Scott and Alex against him. Getting back to the Summer Brothers, we see that Scott Summers still doesn't completely believe his father's story. You do have Christopher still try to get Scott to open up more and believe everything he was told. Something else to mention is that the Summer Brothers don't really get along with one another. Either way, you have Scott Summers walk away because he's still having doubts about his father's story. But we do see Scott Summers run into a pile of dead bodies. And the question he has now, what happened to everyone here? Because there are way too many dead bodies here. You have Scott Summers find a lady who is tied in chains and stuck in a trash can. When we find out that this is Misty Knight. She explains something that attacked her in her friends. Once the people had captured her, something else, a third party killed the people who captured her. 
after the two of them decide to work together, they find the dead body of Colleen Wing. When they walk away, that is when we see Colin Wing's body come back to life. You have Scott Summers bring Misty Knight back to the base he and the rest of the Summers are currently using at the moment. Where of course you have Alex Summers not liking the idea of sharing a temporary base with Misty Knight who is a human. Before we can explore more of that, you have the book reveal that all of the dead bodies Scott Summers saw earlier had come back to life. Where of course, they all came here to attack all of the Summers and Misty Knight. This leads into this big brawl. But while this brawl is going on, that is when we get to see that something about the dead bodies being here really bothers Christopher Summers more than usual. This leads into the moment where it seems that the group is about to die by the hands of these zombies, only to be saved by Sinister coming in here at the last second killing them off. Except he then tells the boys that he has to kill their father because he has something inside of him. This is where we learn that he was infected by the brood. The brood being a race of aliens that loves to implant their race inside of you in different ways. You have Sinister using this moment to say that when Christopher first got here, Sinister had detected the brew DNA inside of him and knew he had to die. Either way, this fight does last a long time, but it does end up with Scott Summers actually killing his father because his father begged him to do it. And his father knew there was no way of coming back after being infected by the brood. So that is the end of Christopher Summers. The book closes on with Scott Summers and Alex Summers saying goodbye to their father. Except this leads into the moment you have Alex Summers show how upset he is with the fact that his father is dead. Remember that Scott Summers is hated by his brother. Either way, you have Sinister lie saying that he was hoping to find a way to save their father, but only failed. The book closes on Scott Summers remembering what his father told him, which is, don't go down the path that he is currently on, which those words begin to process of Scott Summers realizing how wrong Sinister and Apocalypse truly is. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.